So once again, Starship development at Boca Chica just passed another milestone, and what a milestone it was. All six engines on Ship 24 igniting at the same time during a brief static fire. That's something that has never been attempted before, and it seemed to go off without a hitch. However, like so many things that happen at Boca Chica, this came with a bit of an asterisk. We're not not exactly certain why, although there are some theories at the moment, but a grass fire was ignited shortly thereafter, and it burned 68 acres worth of grasslands in the area. Not a tremendous fire, but then again, not a tiny one either. It required the reaction of the local fire department, and they didn't manage to get it under control until the night by executing a controlled burn themselves. Now, this isn't something that's really going to put the program in any sort of jeopardy and the fuel tanks probably weren't in any sort of danger or the tank farm, anything along those lines. But still, this is something happening very close to a protected area that could trigger some responses from environmental groups who have been trying extremely hard to get this project stopped. And here's the question, not necessarily is this going going to create any problems for Starship. A 68-acre fire most probably isn't. But what happens if things get worse? And why did this fire get going in the first place? Hello, YouTube. I'm the Angry Astronaut, and this is... So this is obviously what we all, or most of us anyway, dream of seeing in the future. This picturesque area of coastal Texas playing host to an active star base, a place where Starship is taking off and landing on a regular basis, and the human race begins expanding into the solar system in earnest. And it's going to require lots and lots of launches from this location, at least if it wants to be a significant and part of the Starship program in order to make all of this possible. Now, right now, only five orbital launches per year have been approved through the FAA's documentation. However, if this location really wants to contribute, it's going to have to launch many, many times in order to accommodate a full refueling of Starship in low Earth orbit. So that being the case, we're going to need a lot of launches. And so overall, all this time, what local environmental groups and also massive organizations like the Sierra Club have been arguing is there's no way that you can carry out a regular cadence of launches from this kind of area that is a protected wildlife refuge and make it viable without destroying the surrounding area. But this isn't really the case. We've seen this happen at Cape Canaveral many times where they have launched enormous rockets over the years. And yet, Cape Canaveral is still a thriving habitat for all kinds of indigenous species. And indeed, grass fires have been started at Cape Canaveral on a number of occasions. But there are things that make Cape Canaveral very different from Boca Chica. For example, Boca Chica Beach is still a public beach that, at least in theory, requires public access. That's something that Cape Canaveral has an enormous amount of control over. They they can determine who goes where and when with impunity. This is not the case with SpaceX. They're operating in an area where people have been living for a very long time. People have been accustomed to getting access to the beach for a very long time. And also, these local protected species have had a safe habitat for a very long time. And all of that could be changed by a significant anomaly or perhaps even a 33 engine static fire. Now all of this having been said, what really caused the grass fire at Boca Chica? Well first of all I'd like to thank Lab Padre for 
for this ongoing access to their content. They provide excellent coverage for everything that's going on at Boca Chica. Please visit their site on a regular basis and subscribe. Okay, so right now the prevailing theory is that the heat of all six of those Raptor engines actually melted small globs of concrete and actually sent these incinerated or molten pieces of concrete as far as 100 meters from the pad. It's difficult to believe that these engines in such a short burst of energy could actually melt concrete to that extent and throw these fragments so far, but that seems to be what happened. And so it started this widespread grass fire. Now SpaceX does have plans to do some controlled burns surrounding the pad in order to deprive any potential fire of fuel in the future. And by the way, NASA does those sorts of things as well. But nature has a way of counterbalancing these sorts of efforts. Unfortunately, right after a fire, you tend to have a lot of regrowth. We've seen this during any forest fire. Usually, the area starts to recover fairly quickly. And so it will require that SpaceX do these controlled burns very, very regularly in order to keep this issue under control. That could prove to be very difficult and also something that could theoretically get out of control. Nevertheless, it does seem to be the best plan right now. But it still begs the question, what would happen in a 33 engine static fire? Of course, a great deal more thrust, a lot more energy, and therefore a lot more of these melted concrete globules. Now, there is a solution to this problem. It's something that they've been using out at Cape Canaveral for a very long time and something that a lot of people have said should be installed at Boca Chica, and this is a flame trench. It requires the exhaust from the rocket, first of all, to pass through a lot more space. It's dug a lot deeper, therefore it loses some of its energy by the time it reaches the concrete, but more importantly, it directs the force of the thrust in a specific direction, therefore allowing us to have more control over the energy being released from this enormous number of engines and the tremendous amount of energy that they unleash when they are fired. In my opinion, that's something that they should really consider installing before they attempt an orbital launch. Because if a mere six Raptor 2 engines manage to do this to solid concrete during a couple seconds worth of burn, the sustained burn necessary in order to get this beast off the ground with 33 engines is unquestionably going to create an even worse phenomenon. Now, the surrounding area could be very damp. It does rain a lot in this region, so that could reduce the possibility of a more extensive grass fire, but never Nevertheless, it is simply an unnecessary risk that need not be taken when there are good solutions to be had. Yes, it will require more construction, it will require more money invested, but it's definitely worth it just as a good sound suppression system was worth it, which fortunately they seem to have installed. And there is, of course, another problem to consider, and this is what I've talked about over and over again, and that is a significant anomaly of some kind. Regardless of what kind of precautions they take prior to any sort of orbital launch, Launch, if there is an airburst just over the pad or right on the pad, something along those lines, it is going to create a massive conflagration. Even if it doesn't create a conventional explosion that shatters windows, that sort of thing, the way N1 did, the fireball is going to be massive, a conflagration of epic proportions. And I can't see how this isn't going to cause an enormous grass fire or at the very least incinerate just about every living thing within several hundred meters of the pad. 
And by the way, I'm not saying anything that these different groups that are opposing Starship launches from Boca Chica haven't already thought of. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure they're pouring through their records to see if there's any legal precedent for them to start filing a new lawsuit based on this recent occurrence, no matter how small the fire was. And one thing is certain, if something much, much worse than this happens in the future, they will be all over it, and that is something that we dare not risk. But fortunately, there are solutions. Number one, as I said, a flame trench. That should really be installed as quickly as possible or something similar to it. A number of alternatives have been pr uh, proposed, rather. Anything that keeps this from happening again is a good solution. Number two, they really need to proceed with extreme caution, especially if we're talking about 33 engine static fires or when this thing finally lifts off, doing everything they possibly can to avoid a full-fledged explosive anomaly close to the pad. And there are ways to avoid this, they just simply need to proceed with a lot more caution than SpaceX has been accustomed to in the past, but I think it's necessary. But lastly, we also need to remind the public, or SpaceX does anyway, of why this is being done in the first place. I mean, ask yourself, if Jeff Bezos was doing this simply to send rich tourists into space, would we really support it that much? Would we really think that it's worth the risk? No, we probably wouldn't. So we also need to remind the public, and I think all of us really, any space flight enthusiast really should, especially if we live in this area, why we're doing this in the first place. Expansion into space is important not just for the future of the human species and our ambitions in space, but also for the future of this planet. I continue to maintain that the salvation of planet Earth lies out in space. Everything we need to save this planet in terms of green energy and green technology is out in space. Silica for solar panels on the moon, also various types of rare metals to support our civilization without having to rape the environment in order to get our hands on it. Also, solar panels in space, which will be four times as efficient as the ones that we have on Earth. Lithium for batteries. All of these things that we need for so-called green energy are out there, and we can't get to them out there and effectively exploit them without a heavy rocket like Starship. And it's important that we remind the public, and even in environmentalists who are steadfastly opposed to this, that really what they want, what they want in terms of protecting the earth and also implementing green energy solutions is out in space. And if we continue trying to find those solutions here and continue to exploit the resources on our own planet, the damage is going to be far more significant. And that's why we're sending this rocket into orbit in the first place. And that's that's why it's worth the risk. Smash that like, hit that subscribe. Also, please check the description for various ways to support my channel and hit that notification bell button. That's very important as well. And as always, stay angry about space.